Hello everybody, I am so excited to share this project with you. I created this with some of the fluid acrylics and I put it on a wood slice, so I'm creating on a wood slice. Uh, but before I get into the project, I did want to say that if you are not subscribed to the Creative Team YouTube channel, be sure to um, check out the link below. I will have it linked. There is so much in inspiration and videos to be seen. I urge you to go check it out. You do not want to miss any of the videos. Uh, all right, so I am going to start off with a wood slice. I get these off of Amazon or, um, you know, your local craft store, uh, wherever you can find find it. This one is about seven inches like long and about maybe six or five inches tall, if that makes sense. So it's longer than it is wider. I hope that's making sense. <laughs> I uh, wanted to keep the wood look uh, in the background, so I primed it with some gesso, although it doesn't, it's hard to explain because obviously the wood is very, very porous, so it is just sucking up all of the gesso. Um, I just wanted to give a nice you know, just a little coat of gesso if you are really worried about um, the inks or sprays or paints seeping into the wood and losing that wood look definitely do a couple coats and I would probably recommend even using like a like a gel a matte gel or something first and then gesso on top of that um, just to give a nice barrier between uh, the wood piece and then whatever you're going to be um, doing on top of that all right, so next I uh, am adding some texture with some paper paste from Finnebear. I love the stuff. This is my favorite stuff ever. <laughs> and I used one of the stencils. Now I'm just going to uh, dry that a little bit. And in the meantime, I'm just taking some sticks. You can get these from the yard. I got them at my craft store because I don't, we don't really have a lot of trees in the desert. <laughs> so I had to purchase mine, unfortunately. Uh, but I know a lot of you live in places where you can find amazing things out in uh, the, uh, in nature to create with. So don't ever overlook something because you can always use it <laughs> in mixed media. All right, so I have these leftover chipboard pieces. I don't even know what brand they were from. They are the negative part, um, and I liked that they were circle with a little bit of kind of cool edges there, so I kept them. I don't know, uh, you know, like I said, what chipboard pieces they were from originally, um, but they're, you know, you can always keep uh, scraps of your chipboard pieces and things like that just to save for later. You never know when you're going to want to use something. All right, I am taking a bunch of the mechanical pieces and different uh, metal pieces, some resin pieces from Prima, just a bunch of um, embellishments from Prima. Most of them are from Finnebear's line uh, and all of, you know, everything will be linked down below as always. So be sure to check out the supply list uh, at where you can get all of these products. All right, so the next step is I wanted to add a little bit of texture uh, and something different to this project with some of the fabric from Finnebear. It comes in a pack of fabric. There's a burlap, uh, and then this like cotton material. It's really nice to work with and I just uh, rip it apart into strips and I'm using some matte gel or some heavy body gel, I'm sorry, to adhere it to the wood piece and I'm not putting the gel on, the, you know, all of the uh, fabric, just in the center. So I want a lot of that frayed um, areas and I don't want everything to be stiff and flat to this piece. I want some dimension and some depth to the project so I'm not going to add too much of the the gel just enough to make sure that it's adhered to the wood slice. 
All right, I am now going to uh, adhere the different elements and different uh, embellishments to the project and kind of figure out my composition here. So I take the chipboard piece, the larger circle, and uh, put some heavy body gel on it. I kind of just smushed it down to make sure that it was going to adhere to the fabric underneath. And now I'm just placing some more fabric on top just to give just, you know, more depth and interest and just adding layers and layers. That is the most important thing for mixed media is just adding lots and lots of layers, even if in, you know, you uh, kind of cover up most of it and just a little bit is showing it all adds to the end result of your project. All right, now I am going to place the smaller circle to the right and just kind of smush it down again. I'm going to play with placement just a little bit and I am using the heavy body gel to adhere everything because I am going to be adhering a lot of things on here and it's going to be quite heavy and it is going to sit upright. I want to make sure that nothing is going to fall off. So the heavy body gel is definitely the way to go uh, if you are creating a mixed media piece uh, that is going to either be, um, you know, uh, messed with a lot, like picked up a lot or something uh, like this where you're going to want to display it where the things are upright. Um, over time, like hot glue won't work or um, like Fabri-Tac, which is uh, one of my favorite glues to use. It just isn't, uh, um, what's the word? It's not heavy duty enough, I guess is what I'm trying to say. This heavy body gel is amazing to use for mixed media projects. All right, so now I am placing all of those little uh, twigs or wood pieces, uh, branches onto my piece here and I kind of staggered them just to give a little bit more interest to the project and um, and I made sure that I smushed them down so that all of that glue can adhere to the fabric and you know so that it all stays together all right now I am uh, well I took a photo from one of Finnebear's sticker uh, packs and I put it on some cardstock and then I kind of roughed up the edges and now I am going to play around with placement of all of these embellishments this takes me quite a bit of time and I did speed some of it up quite a bit um, and I know this video is quite long, um, but there is so much uh, techniques and different things to show you guys that I definitely wanted to keep everything in. And I hope you guys are enjoying um, these videos. Uh, let's see. I am, again, just placing things here and there. Some are uh, the mechanicals and some other random Prima uh, pieces that I've had. So I talk about this a lot. I have a bin full of just kind of randomness. It could either be stuff that I find around my house or if I open a package of embellishments and I only use a couple I or there's only a couple left or like one left, I don't want to put it back in the package. So I'll just throw everything in one bin and that's what I go to first before I open up another package. So when I'm looking for different things to use on a project, I will go to that bin first. I don't necessarily have, you know, every little piece planned out exactly what I want to use on every project. I kind of see what I can use first and mostly, I try to use mostly things from that bin. That way I'm not opening up a bunch of packages all the time and using um, uh, new things all the time. I want to try to, you know, use all the stuff that's in that bin. But anyways, that's just a little tip for you guys to um, uh, just how to store different things or, you know, just something while I'm messing around with where to put all this, all of this. All right, I'm going to finish up adding some metal pieces and now on to the coloring. This is the fun part. So I didn't really know exactly my vision which I often say uh, for my projects 
but I just kind of start somewhere and I knew that I wanted to use a wood slice and then I just kind of grabbed a bunch of things that I thought that I would want to use on my project. There is a whole um, pile of things that I didn't use on my project, but I like to pull things and prep things ahead of time, even if I'm not going to use it because that way it's ready. Uh, if I just pull one thing and kind of try and place it, it just, it's hard to see the end result. Uh, so I just pull a bunch of things, prep it with gesso or whatever, paint it or emboss it, whatever I'm doing at that moment, and then play with all of them at the same time. That way I can get a, a good look at how I want the full project to look. I for me, that's how I work. I can't place one thing and think, oh, I want that there exactly. And nothing else is there. Just my, I mean, I have to have everything at hand is what I'm trying to say and place everything, move things around. Um, and I did that off camera, by the way, I did not. Uh, so I had done all of the placement before. And then I took a picture and moved everything off to the side. I, I did change a few things here and there when I was, you know, in the final stages of gluing everything down. But uh, I guess that might be a good tip for those of you that are trying to, um, you know, that are new to mixed media. Just kind of play around with placement when you think that you have it nice and how you want it. Take a picture and then you can go back and glue everything you know, and you don't have to uh, commit to something right away. Um, anyways, all right, so I am using the fluid inks, the fluid acrylic inks. These are my new favorite. All right, I am using a couple different colors, but the main color I use is burnt sienna. So what I do is I spray a little bit of water onto my project, and then I have off to the side here, I have the paint that I just kind of squirt a little bit out and I will water it down a little bit and then go back and forth um, between adding water to the project and then adding a little bit of water to the paint um, and then after everything is where I want it then I can add a little bit more concentrated color and get a lot more depth to the project. If I add too much at once it's a little bit harder because these are acrylic ink, acrylic paints to um, fix it. I mean, you could gesso it or, or something, but it's harder um, to pick up than it is to put more down. So if you are a little bit scared of color, uh, just add a little bit here and there and then um, play with it and then you can keep adding more if you want. Um, a lot of people tend to add all you know the whole project and then they say oh I didn't want to do that and then it's harder to take away so just adding little bits uh, at first and then you could definitely keep adding as you go the other color that I am using a little bit is umber and it's like a almost like a green brown um, I wanted it to match a little bit uh, color um, to the photo the photo is aged <laughs> that's the best way i could say it so the color is aged and the umber color uh really matches it well so i add a little bit of that as well all right so i always have a baby wipe well a few <laughs> for different reasons so uh one is to obviously pick up color that i don't want uh, the other is to help blend the color um, in areas where i want it to look like it's supposed to be like rusty there and you know you don't want a harsh line because that's not how really if you have if you see a project well not a project but if you see something out in nature and it has rust on it it's not going to have these you know harsh lines from brown to the rust color to yellow to you know it's going to be blended together and all mixed in and all of that so having a wet baby wipe or a wet paper towel to blend the color out it really helps a lot all right so I kind of wanted to tone down a little bit of the rust color on top of some of these embellishments but then I realized that I did not like that I wanted it to be more rusty so I will go back in um, and add uh, some of the umber and the burnt sienna color 
um, of the uh, liquid acrylics from Finibear. Um, but I did want to keep this in just to show you guys that sometimes you do something and then you decide that, you know what, I don't like that. You can always, 99% of the time, you can always go back and fix it. It's very, it's not very many times where I couldn't fix a project or make it a way that um, was pleasing to me. So definitely don't give up on a project. Keep going, even if you have to step away. I've stepped away from projects for days and then came back and decided, you know what, maybe I'll try this. All right, I am going in with some of that color now. Like I had said, I am adding a little bit more uh, underneath all of the embellishments to kind of um, give more depth depth to the project and I did add a word sticker from Finibear and I am now adding splatters so I wish I didn't add the dark splatters but that's okay it all it all comes together in the end um, I am just painting with the burnt sienna and umber um, just kind of going back and forth and even mixing them together just to create a different color. So I'm going back over all of the the areas where I put uh, the gesso. Um, and I end up really liking that because it gives it a different tone. I wanted more depth to the project. That's why I ended up adding gesso to you know highlight some of the areas and then I thought no this it does it just doesn't look right to me for this particular project so I went back in and added more color and it gave it a different tone and it did um, lighten up some of that color so that it did have um, those highlights and that depth that I did want all right so I guess it was maybe a happy mistake <laughs> a good mistake or a happy accident all right, I am adding some splatters and uh, I used the uh, titanium white liquid acrylic and a little bit of the gesso to add the splatters. I didn't add too many, um, but I decided that, that it was too many for this project. Again, I am kind of fixing things that I don't really care for. Um, but that's okay. That's, you know, part of creating. We just kind of create and go and just, yeah, just add color, take away color, put more, more things, more embellishments, take away embellishments. It's all, um, it's, it's a, it's a process and I absolutely love the process of creating. All right. I am still adding color <laughs> to this project. Uh, but I think that is almost it. This was a really fun project and probably one of my favorite projects I have made in a long time. And it was, I was having the hardest time not sharing it because I had to, again, uh, make it before going to Creativation. I get very impatient when I make a project that I am absolutely in love with. I just... Uh, I can't wait to share it with you guys. So I am so happy that you guys are seeing it now. If you enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to share with your friends and tag me on social media if you create a project inspired by one of my projects. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I will catch you guys later. Bye.